we're considering Tascon essay this evening. So on the day of the examination, it's going to be you and your paper like this with other candidates. Let's give you are not a special one that they will place you in a single room or they will put you alone in a room. I've not had anybody doing it that way anyway. But it's going to be you just like this lady. Then you'll be busy with your um, um, answer booklet and your question paper by your side. Um, I task one writing is when information are presented in graphical format or in pictorial form, a candidate will be expected to make a summary from such, from that picture that you are looking at, from that shot that you are looking at, you'll be expected to make a summary from such and present a logical account of that information. In the sense that, what do I mean by saying you keep on saying logical, logical, logical? Your task one essay writing must be logical and must be sensible in the sense that your examiner should be able to read, comprehend it without struggling and without looking at the at the question. Uh, what differentiates a good task one essay writer from a struggling or an average or a poor writer is the fact that when a good writer writes a task one essay without looking at the question, without looking at the chart, without looking at the picture, you that you are reading it will be able to make sense out of it. But even there are some people after writing it, you're still looking at the picture, you're still looking at the diagram, or you're still looking at the chart, you still be finding it difficult even to understand whatever they've written down. So um, the purpose of this class is to pain us and to also open our eyes to all those things that are expected of all those things that we groom us in order to write a very uh, a, a, a presentable and a decent and a standardized task one essay writing. So task one writing is divided into the following. So we have line graph, bar chart, bar chart, table, map process, and multiple data charts. Um, I've seen people say, oh, I love line graph. I, I, I love line graph, but I don't like bar chart. I dislike pie chart. I dislike table. Uh, I want to say that you just have to make sure that you form a kind of friendship with all this type of task one essay, uh, uh, task one essay question, be it line graph, Pie chart, pie chart, table, map process, or multiple data charts, because you cannot predict. You may be able to predict, them, but most times you may not be able to predict accurately what is going to be coming out in your own exam. It means that when you've already gotten yourself prepared adequately, then it's going to be easy for you to tackle any of this form of task one essay writing. Uh, what are the tips in writing task one essay? The tips in writing task one essay are, are these, and they are not, uh, I mean, are these, and they are not limited to this particular one, but we'll be looking at them one after the other. Before I jump into that, I want to tell you that your task one essay is going to take you 20 minutes on the day of the examination. You'll be given 20 minutes to write your task one essay. You'll be given 40 minutes to write the second one. That is your tax two essay. I think your tax two essay tutor is going to elaborate on that. So what do I mean is that uh, that time is crucial. Your time management is essential when it comes to tax one essay writing or when it comes to IET essay writing generally. Like you just have to devise a way of managing your time. Your time starts immediately. They tell you that you should start writing. Your time starts counting. So you don't have that luxury of time to be wasting around. Then, uh, so please make sure you get yourself prepared. When you prepare very well, it's not going to be difficult for you to know how you are going to start. It is when you don't prepare that you may be finding it difficult to understand or to comprehend the question. And it may be difficult for you to think on how to commence writing your answers uh having said that number one tip is that you must paraphrase the question given to you uh, what do i mean that like the question given to you you are going to write or you must write it in your own words after you might have paraphrased or rephrased the question uh the question is still going to be portraying 
the initial meaning. I mean, whatever you paraphrase it to, we still be having the initial meaning, the same meaning as the as the question that you paraphrased from. What do I mean by that? It's just like maybe you say, okay, the house has been destroyed. Maybe but the house has been imagine you saying, okay, the house has been destroyed by the heavy rainfall. Then somebody may look at it and and say, okay, the house has been shattered by the heavy rainfall. Destroyed and shattered, they are similar in meaning. So by the time anybody is reading the two, they will be able to actually understand that what this person is trying to pass across is that, okay, there has been a destruction regarding that particular house as a result of heavy downpour. So what I'm saying in the essence here is that you must make sure you paraphrase the question given to you, writing it in your own words, looking at the keywords in those questions, and replacing them with their synonyms. Say, for example, maybe where you see destruction, you turn it to demolition, if demolition is suitable. Maybe where you see schooling, you turn it to education, if education is suitable. Where you see important, you turn it to crucial or pertinent, if those things are suitable. So. That's it. I mean, that is how to go about paraphrasing. Another way of paraphrasing is that you can simply order the position of the words, like changing a word from object and taking it to the subject position, bringing the one at the object position and bringing it down to the subject position. Say, for example, somebody may be saying, oh, Tunde is sitting on the chair. Another person may look at it and say, oh, the chair is seated upon by Tunde. That is still paraphrasing. That doesn't paraphrasing does not mean that you must change every damn word. There are times that people may be looking for like there are some words they may be looking out for to paraphrase, especially they may be looking for for synonyms of on, <laughs> synonyms of off. That is going to be difficult. I don't think there is any synonyms for, for those ones. All those prepositions that show relationship between two things, you may not be able to find synonyms to all those ones. So. Same paraphrasing does not mean that you must change every damn word or every damn word in that particular question. You may change like two or three, you will be fine. But make sure that you are not repeating everything babatin by the time you'll be writing your answer. There are four key things. There are four key things that are the major elements of paraphrasing. Those, those four things are number one, you must tell us the type of shapes that you are dealing with. That is where you start showcasing to your examiner that you actually understand what you are saying. It is, you may say the shot given, but it doesn't speak well. It doesn't speak well as the person that actually understand and can differentiate between those that by just saying the shot given. Be confident enough. You should be able to differentiate. If it is line graph, say the line graph given. You must tell us the type of shot that you are dealing with. Don't just say the shot given, just say the line graph, if it is line graph. If it is bar shot, say the bar shot given. Don't say the bar shot, don't say the bar shot. Uh, I, mean the bar, uh, the, uh, I mean the bar shot given above or below, because you are not going to be drawing everything back into your answer booklet. You are not, there is no time for you to be drawing the map or to, the, to be drawing the shot. Don't start saying the bar shot below or the bar shot above, just keep it Cool. Keep it simple. The line graph given. So what I'm saying is that four key things are the major elements of paraphrasing. All those four things must reflect in your paraphrasing. Number one is that the type of shot that you are dealing with. The timing in that shot is the shot. If a shot is having a time, make sure that 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 time reflects in your paraphrasing. Is it between 2010 and 2015? Then the next one is that you must tell us the unit of measurement. Is what you are looking at or what you are discussing at that particular moment, is it measured in percentage? Is it in kilogram? Is it in pounds? Is it in dollars? You must make sure that you tell us the unit of measurement. Then the next one is that you must tell us the targeted population or the targeted, targeted information. Which information is the chart all about? What, what, what is the chart 
centered around or what is the major focus of that chat that is what the chat is going to be describing what i mean by by that is that take for example imagine seeing the line graph illustrates the percentage of male and female that voted in the last general election in nigeria in that situation the targeted population or the targeted entity that that line graph is going to be describing is the numbers of, of, of male and female voters in the last general election. In that sense, it means that your targeted population or your targeted entity is going to be male and female. So let me repeat myself again. Four things must be included in your paraphrasing. If a chart is having time, like year, make sure you include that. If a chart is, is having unit of measurement, make sure you include that. You must tell us the type of shots that you are dealing with and at the same time the targeted population or the targeted entity in that particular shot the number two is that you must write the overview overview is just like a succinct something that can summarize the that can summarize the entire information in that particular shot overview is not an in-depth analysis it is never an in-depth illustration of the chart the mistake that people do make is that they start writing, it increased to three, it, it, it falls down to four, it rose to blah, blah, in overview. That is absolutely wrong. In overview writing, you are not describing, you are not illustrating. You are just giving us a generalized view, the general concept of what the chart is talking about. It is not an in-depth illustration of what has happened in that particular chart. Overview writing are those information that you can spot easily. You don't need to start to start racking or start trying or start um or start uh, stressing yourself to pick your overview when if you are conversant with how to go about it. So uh, there are two ways of writing overview. Overview can be written around what is most common. Again, overview can be written around information that are outliers. Outliers in the sense that those, those information do not agree with the rest of the information. It is rather they are too big or they are too small. Uh, again, somebody may think, may now, write, may now write the overview in such a way that it's going to encompass the is going to encompass what is most common and at the same time the outlier depending on how skillful you are in writing this thing but just know that you can form your overview around what is most common and at the same time around the information or the data that do not agree with the rest of the data say for example listen to this illustration because i will be asking us a question uh and i will be expecting contribution from one or two people so imagine uh um i don't know uh let me use imagine there is one popular market in lagos state which is alaba international market imagine you get to alaba international market then on getting to that market you discover that you you only uh saw 50 people out of those 50 people 48 of them i mean the height of 48 of them is between three feet to five feet. 48 of those 50 people, their height is between three feet to five feet. You know, we still be having other two people left. One of the remaining two people is 30 feet tall. Then the remaining one is just one feet, one, or is just one feet tall. As a person that is visiting that Alaba International Market for the first, first time, what is going to intrigue you or what is going to capture your attention immediately looking at that population? Somebody that is extremely tall and the other one that is extremely short because they are outlier. You are seeing 48, they are between three feet to five feet. That between three feet to five feet is going to appear as the normal height of those of that population. But one is 13 feet, which is more than double the height of the noma that one is going to capture your attention that why is this person so tall then the other one that is that short that one will capture your attention as to say why is this person so short those people that have 
almost moderate height will not in any way intrigue you, intrigue you as a person that is visiting that market for the first time. Are we making sense here, please? It is just like a, just, just let me relate it to Nollywood. When Akin and Popo were reigning, there were other comedians that are taller than them, that, that are more funnier than them, but their height give them a edge over those people. Because people were intrigued because why they, they are so small, yet they are saying all these things. Not minding that those guys were already old, like they, they were already in their maybe around 30 or in their late 20s, around that particular time. So they were no longer children. But that their height get people captivated and that one got them the whole thing. That is the same way our mind plays around those things that seem to be abnormal. What will capture our attention in that population is going to be that person that is too tall and that person that is too short. So as a person, I may now form my flyer. Value. Let me say this, nobody has the best way of writing overview. And let me say this again, when you don't write a good overview, it may be difficult for you to even have 6.5. So it's not something that you should choke with. Your overview is you can get your examiner, you, you, you can get the attention of, you can, you can get your examiner captivated with your work right from your overview. Your overview is just the gateway to the body. Then when you piece off your examiner right from the overview, then it's almost like a sorry case. And we don't want to do that. So you want to write an overview that is, if, if it is not accurate, very close to being accurate. Let me say this, nobody has the best way of writing it, but strive to write something that is at least of good standard. That if we are to write overview around, I mean, regarding those people in the market, I can write, I can write it around what is most common. I can now say, okay, overall it can be seen. Virtually everybody in Alapa International Market are of the same height. Don't forget that word I said partially, which means which does not mean which does not mean in total, but close to be in totality. We understand. That is for me my overview around what is most common. I can as well for my overview around the outlier and say okay, overall it can be seen that among the people in Alapa International Market only one person is extremely tall and another one is extremely short then again another person can now write his own overview along what is most common and the outlier and say overall it can be seen that almost everybody in alaba international market are of the same height except one person that is extremely tall and the other one that is extremely short does that make sense how we can form our overview writing. There are don'ts. There are things that you must not do while writing your overview. You know, when we're talking about paraphrasing, we talked about the four elements of paraphrasing. We said that there are four things that must reflect in our paraphrasing. There are things that must not reflect in our overview writing. Number one is that in overview writing, you must not tell us data. You must not start telling us. When you listen to the overview that I just gave now, I just say overall it can be said that it can be seen that seen that 48 of them are between three feet to five feet tall. By the time I start mentioning three five feet, three is the data, five is the, is the data. Do you understand? In overview writing, you don't mention data. In overview writing, you don't mention unit of measurement. You don't start saying, okay, it is feet or it is kilogram. Then in overview writing, if you can do away with the year, excellent. But if you cannot do away, you can still include the year. It is pardon, it is still allowed. But if you can do away with the year, fantastic. Fantastic. Are we communicating, please? Hello, any question? No question, I guess. Thank you. So having said that, the next one is that you must not write below 150.